The military system of belief contends that one of the main ways of controlling society and ensuring social stability is through use of organised violence and force. Militarism provides a context for much of the violence in society. As the government sees force as a legitimate means to an end, or, in fact, an end in itself, society is anaesthetised to it and eventually comes to accept it. This is reinforced in civilian life by the media, which glorifies war and portrays violence as necessary, combat as exhilarating, and aggression as natural. As violence becomes accepted, it is minimised through language which distorts and sanitises its impact. Carol Cohen argues that military doublespeak masks the lethality of nuclear war. Missiles are called peacekeepers. Civilian targets become collateral damage and penetrating weapons hit virgin targets. Militaristic terms have pervaded the English language and are especially evident in sports with teams decimating and annihilating each other. While militaristic language and war movies may seem harmless, they are symptoms of a society which minimises the ramifications of military activities and institutionalised violence. This acceptance of coercion and physical force as primary methods for solving problems can extend to violence in the home and in relationships. I was reading an extract from an article called Women and Militarism there by Colleen Burke. When I was a kid, I was made to see, I was conditioned to see, our military, our soldiers, as great heroes, brave protectors of the weak, defenders of civilization, role models, courageous souls who we could look up to. Then I got older and started to develop the ability to think critically and I started to think about the bigger picture. I started to question the things my little brain had been filled up with. Then piece by piece over time I've thrown those things away. So, what about us? What about this country? Are we anaesthetised? Do we accept organised violence and force as legitimate means to an end? 
Do we see violence as necessary? Do the majority of us still see our military as a source of pride? Bound up with national tradition? Well, there are plenty of support the troops or support our soldiers charities in this little country of ours, aren't there? One of which is Help for Heroes. And they say, we believe that anyone who volunteers to serve in a time of war knowing that they may risk all, is a hero. Why? If I sign up to fight in some unjust war of conquest, and I go out to some country on the other side of the planet, and I kill lots of innocent people in the line of duty, does it make me a hero if I did all that knowing that I may have been risking all? It certainly does not, in my view. People get labelled as unpatriotic if they don't support the troops. These people are shedding their blood so you can be free. They're giving their lives so you can live in peace. Ever heard those lines before? I have a lot. Personally, I don't want anyone spilling their blood or that of anyone else's in my name. I don't want people committing acts of violence for me. And I don't want to see politicians glorifying violent actions either. We'll never be truly free. We'll never have a lasting peace if we don't break the cycle of violence. And we won't break that cycle until folks change their attitudes, change the way they look at things. I can't support the troops because I can't support the military. I can't support that institution. I cannot support the idea that might makes right. I cannot and will not support institutionalized violence. It goes against my principles. Until human beings everywhere wake up and see themselves as one people, all part of the same world, you know, we won't break the cycle of violence. Militaristic nationalism is the enemy of the world. It's the enemy of the human race. So many seem blind to this fact. And that's really sad. But things can change. And change they must.
Anyway, peace, folks. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>